We are back with Eric Westman and we are trying to find out some key components to a low carb or keto type of program. And a lot of questions get asked around, well, there are two types of uh, metabolic states that we can, we can live in. And that is to become, we are either a carb burner or sugar burner, or we are living off ketones. So, um, and that is a state called ketosis. So I think it would be great to ask one of the leaders in, this, um, in the low carb or ketogenic world, how, does our, how do our bodies go from being a sugar or glucose burner and adapt to become a fat burner or a, a body that, that lives on ketones? It's really pretty easy to understand because our bodies burn what we feed it or what we eat. So if you eat carbohydrates, you're going to burn them. If you eat carbohydrates and fats, you're going to burn carbohydrates and fats. So the process of what to do to change your body from a carb burner to a fat burner is just to not eat the carbohydrates and just eat the fats. Now, protein comes first, and that's why I don't really talk about protein much. That's a given. But you can choose to run your fat uh, off your body off your fat, body fat, or the carbohydrates that you eat. You see, we don't store carbohydrates in our body very, uh, very well, or we don't have much carbohydrate storage, so we have to burn it. Or if there's extra carbohydrate, we store it as fat. And actually, the human body has almost an unlimited ability to store fat. We don't store sugar or carbs. Okay. So it was discovered um, in 1863 in London, England. William Banting figured out, or was told, that if he just didn't eat the sugars and the starches, his body started burning fat. And it worked on his own fat first. You start burning your own body fat. So what you notice when you transition from a carb eater and a carb burner to a fat eater and a fat burner, is that your hunger will go away after a day or two. That's the first thing you'll notice. You might notice some headache or fatigue because your body has built up all of these enzymes or factory workers, if you will, to burn carbs. And as your body changes internally, it has to change the enzymes that it uses from the ones that burn sugar and starches to the ones that burn fat. And for some people that gives you headache, fatigue, uh, occasionally, but pretty uncommon, you might feel like you have a flu, flu-like symptoms. Now, the way to minimize that, the likelihood of getting those symptoms is by having lots of water and salt. So we recommend if someone doesn't have a salt-sensitive condition, like high blood pressure or heart failure, because those things can get worse with extra salt, we ask relatively healthy people to add back salt. So we think that it's a shift in the fluids that causes people to feel bad the first week. It might even, worst case, it might go for two weeks. Uh, you might have cravings for things you're not eating anymore, the sugar cravings. You might crave fruit, pasta, rice, uh, all those things that you're not eating, but that's a relatively minor thing. The transition or keto adaptation, so you're changing from sugar burning to fat burning, lowers the blood volume, you have insulin going down. There are a lot of physiologic changes that alter the salt in your body. That's why we had ask you to add back salt um, in that first week or so. Uh, but um, in, in summary, though, you, you basically are going to burn for energy what you eat. So you're in total control of whether you're going to be a carb burner or a fat burner by choosing what to eat. So one of the things... Um you know, I can talk from personal experience and a lot of people that we've, we've spoken to. Um, some people find it very easy to start producing or burning ketones and some people can take up to three months. I've heard some people take you know, as long as three months of cutting out the carbs and start producing those ketones. So um, what do you see typically? How long does it take a person to become adapted from a carb burner, sugar burner, and to be you know, effectively or efficiently burning fat? or producing ketones? Well, for most people, the hunger suppression happens in just a couple days, okay. two, two days or so. Uh, the cravings may go on longer. I don't see that as a keto adaptation, sugar burning kind of thing. That's just your craving things you used to have. 
and that's, that's going to go away on its own. Um, but occasionally, if you have a medical problem, if you have diabetes, if you're relatively sedentary or, uh, or older, these are factors that would make it take longer to get into ketosis um, or to become a good fat burner. Uh, but most people, it's just a matter of a day or two. Just a quick one. Um, my understanding is that let's just say you've been on a keto diet, uh, you're producing ketones, which means that you could take your blood ketones and you are above 0 0.5. And um, let's say you've been doing this for five years and you eat something that is sugary um, or has a lot of carbs in it, that'll knock you out of ketosis immediately. And it could take you a couple of days to get back into ketosis. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's the best case scenario. So that if someone's otherwise healthy and you have some carbs, it might be a day or two to get back into ketosis. But if you have a metabolic problem, you have diabetes, uh, if you've been heavy all your life, you've been dealt the metabolic uh, bad hand of cards uh, that you have a tough metabolism, it might even take a week or two to, to get, get back, back into ketosis. So that, again, that individualization of it is really important. Although I might add that the measurement of ketones is not perfectly understood. Okay. We can measure the breath for acetone. We can measure the blood for beta hydroxybutyrate. We can measure the urine for acetoacetate. It's not even the same molecule we're measuring in these three different methods. So I've seen people get frustrated because they're measuring the ketones, but they're not, quote, in the normal range or in the range that you, they say you want. As long as the hunger is gone, you're losing weight or inches or you're you know, active and you're, you're feeling well, I'm not so concerned about that number of, on the ketone meter being totally perfect all the time. Well, that's fantastic. Well, Eric, thank you very much for that. That is wrapping up today, um, understanding our body, how we become from a carb or sugar burner uh, effectively to a ketone or a fat burner. That was very interesting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.